you know, I think you mentioned uh, there's one thing there uh, about King's North, which I think is really applicable to this discussion around green spaces, green activism, which is that being trans is not, quote, natural, right? Because the thing about questioning civilization, industrialization, and all this is that it's it, it sort of removes us from the, the, the earth, right? It removes us from our connection to the land, from other living beings, the systems of the planet which is okay, um, sure, but that trans people are an affront to that, that they are tran- they're trying to achieve some sort of transhumanist project. Um, could you, I think that that in particular is what is maybe appealing to green types, right? Green activists is like, they're like, yeah, I want to get closer to the earth. What is it with all these trans people trying to be like not of the earth? Like, what are they doing? Uh, if, you, if you could speak to that particular trope or that particular kind of line of argument, because I think it's very applicable to those that are in green spaces? Sure. So I think nature is a, is a word that can, it can mean nature and natural. Okay. And, and, sure. and those two words are used in different ways too, but mm-hmm. they, they can be used to mean so many different things. And it's, it's important to try to zero in on what somebody's trying to say when they say something is, is nature or, or, or natural. And, like in King's North article, he talks about nature and he talks about culture. And so, and after a while you, you realize, uh, yeah, when this guy realized the heat, he's really talking about the two interchangeably mm-hmm. and, and what he's calling nature is, um, is really a, a social construction. So, you know, one of the tropes in his article, which you'll see throughout anti-trans writing is is the conflation of sex and gender i found this to be somebody was not informed about this debate i found this to be shocking that we're even having this discussion i thought this the the distinction between sex and gender had been kind of settled uh, among intelligent people decades ago um i i don't think i have to explain it for anybody who's listening but but since we're talking about it. What I mean when I'm talking about sex is the biological distinction between uh, people, and and this is not a binary distinction. It's a it's a spectrum. There's mm-hmm. intersex people, sure. and uh, it has to do with uh, anatomy. It has to do with chromosomes. It has to do with secondary sex characteristics. It's not at all bright line anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's gender, which is a social construction, uh, which has to do with how we identify how we present how the social roles that we perform the expectations that are put on us and it's a social construction and and Mm -hmm. honestly for the most part i think it's it's worthless you know i don't really see much benefit in society for it um so and 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 that's where and that's where the the turfs come in but um Mm -hmm. so (laughs) but if you conflate the two if you say well it's all just whether you have a penis or not right or then um, anybody who acts differently or presents differently than than your expectation, and uh, you know, I find it fascinating that we're we're defining things by whether people have what whether genitalia is, and really nobody we we don't walk around with their genitalia exposed. So it's just sure. it's fascinating to me that that's even the defining characteristic. But yeah, right. Um, so yeah, I I think there is this this temptation in in green movement toward this talk about what's what's natural but it, it honestly if human beings are doing it it, it falls within nature and it, it's really a, whether something is natural more likely than not if you're having that debate you've more likely than not already conceded the the, the important ground in the in the argument because um i i think the question of whether or not something is natural almost it, it comes from like this almost like christian background of yeah. um you know human beings were at one time in harmony with god and then fell out of nature and and, and fell out of communion with god and now they're, they're in this uh, un- unnatural state and and we need to get back to this union and it's it's all wound up with all of that yeah and I don't find the, the discussion about whether something's natural to be 
useful and really in any context we can say whether we find it to be you know good or bad or whether we find it to be socially um, healthy or not or psychologically healthy or not but naturalness as soon as you start debating about it you've almost lost the argument uh yeah. to well i mean this is the favorite argument of reactionaries and christians and uh and i don't mean to lump all christians in the same box but you know uh, really yeah. conservative christians and um and fascists and uh, so it's a it's a temptation to make that argument or to buy into that argument and i i wouldn't even go there right yeah i think it's worth mentioning as well that you know we're using again we're using king's north as an example but specifically i mean over the past few years he did convert to an orthodox form of christianity isn't that right yes yes and you know and that's a component it is and as an ex post-christian myself i i struggle to you know give the benefit of the doubt when somebody's coming at me from a christian perspective but i i know that there are a lot of uh they're the minority but uh there are plenty of progressive christians out there who whose mm -hmm. values align very well with mine i spent a summer at a a um festival in south carolina called uh wild goose with progressive christians who were uh you know defending trans rights was one of the issues um that they were ex explicitly and publicly standing up for at and this was a few years ago um but of course, they're the minority. So when I saw that Kings North had converted, I was like, oh boy, okay, well, let's mm -hmm. let's see, you know, how this affects his thought process. And I don't know which came first, um, mm -hmm. you know, the chicken or the egg, but um, right. there's definitely an overlap, overlap there. Yeah. Um, but, you know, uh, I just needed to mention that, but I mean, you know, previous to Kings North, another example of transphobia, uh, of, of trans exclusionary politics is, uh, DGR, Deep Green Resistance. And just full disclosure, I've interviewed members of DGR in the past, including Jensen and um, uh, uh, Max Wilbert and uh, Will Falk. Um, I've taken down Jensen's interviews because, in particular, because of this is kind of the interesting point I actually want to ask you because it's like with Kings North, you acknowledge that his writings before a certain time were extremely influential and, and you. And you love those writings. You love that part of who he is. But at a certain point, certain public intellectuals or individuals become, I don't want to say tainted, <laughs> but they, they start to drift in a direction where you're just like, I cannot go with you there, right? right. Um, the thing with Jensen, and I want to say this too, because I know a lot of people you know, certainly have listened to him speak, read his books, and have been like, man, Jensen's on it. He's great. His transphobia goes back a long time. Mm -hmm. Him and Lear Keith and, and the kind of founders of DGR, that's like an integral part of their philosophy, of their whole worldview, yep. is exclusionary of trans people and their experience. So at a certain point, I mean, I, I had that episode up for a while, those two episodes with Jensen in particular, and uh, you know, we didn't talk about trans things at all. It had nothing to do with that. But I was like, you know, I, I really don't want <laughs> Jensen's uh there's no neat categorization and separation of those politics from his work in environmentalism so I'm like yeah, yeah I don't feel good about this I, I don't yeah. think I should have him up on my on my podcast I don't want to platform him any longer I've done this before in the past with other uh, people I've interviewed as well uh, for different reasons but um this really just I wanted to say this as full acknowledgement that my politics and my understandings around these subjects have evolved and I've gotten much better. Um, I've acknowledged the complexity and nuances of the subject, but I've taken a firm stance. I just want to be very clear about that. I've heard of people who really like my podcast and found out I interviewed Jensen, and it really turned them off. And I understand that. I get it. I would be too. <laughs> you know, I do too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I had the same issue. I, I ended up going back to all my, which was a lot, a lot of times that I'd quoted him and put, you know, asterisks next to every time I had quoted him and put a little footnote explaining, you know, okay. And it's convenient for me because with Kings North, I can kind of draw a, a rough line, like this day before you're mm -hmm. probably okay. This day after mm -hmm. I have, I probably have issues, but you're right with, with Jensen and DGR. I mean, it, what's, I find that so frustrating because you really can intellectually 
you know, people like you and me can intellectually separate it out and go, okay, I'm down with, you know, sure. your, your criticism of civilization. I'm down with, um, you know, the critique of human supremacy I'm, I'm, I'm mm-hmm. the anthropocentrism. I'm down with, um, you know, anti-hierarchical, hierarchicalism, I can't say that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, all these points I'm down with. And then you just seem to glob on this anti-trans thing. Why do you, why do you have to like ruin it, man? Why, right. why do you have to ruin it? You had a, such a good thing here and it, you're right. It goes all the way back to the beginning. So I don't know. Yeah. Well, I wanted to kind of go off this too, because I want to, I want to quote something from your article and you write about DGR um, and you say here, the DGR website states, quote, gender is not natural, not a choice and not a feeling. It is the structure of women's oppression, attempts to create more choices, quote, choices within the sex caste system only serve to reinforce the brutal realities of male power. As radicals, we intend to dismantle gender and the entire system of patriarchy, which it embodies, end quote. As Molly Taft at Gizmodo has observed, quote, people not well versed in how modern transphobia manifests may skip over this sentiment or misread it for committed feminism, end quote. But implied in the statement above and made clear on their FAQ, it is the belief that the trans rights movement reinforces the binary gender hierarchy. So I would ask this because this is super important. Um, How do you respond to that claim that being trans only serves to reinforce the brutal realities of male power of the gender binary system? Okay. Well, I want to answer that, but I want to... If it's okay, I want to go back just a little mm-hmm. bit and just say mm-hmm. there's two places where two places where I think the fascist far right is kind of infiltrating the left, and one is radical uh, trans exclusion, radical feminism, feminism, anti-trans feminist, yeah, and uh, if you want to even call them feminists anymore, and um, and then also with a certain kind of um, anti um identity politics marxists uh, like a class reductionist sure. marxist mm-hmm. and there's similar arguments being made in both and i was so i want to make point out what the structure of this argument is and just like, compare it so um the the argument goes okay patriarchy is a bad thing patriarchy is the domination of men over women and the domination of some men uh, over other men and women and children and, um, and on the basis of certain patriarchal values and, and so forth. And so gender, this is perpetuated because of, uh, it's a gender hierarchy, so it's perpetuated because of gender. Gender is a bad thing. We need to get rid of gender. I, I'm I'm with you until that point. Then the jump is where they say, okay, trans people are uh, transitioning from one gender to another. And in so doing, they're reinforcing this gender binary. And there's a certain there's a certain logic to that, I guess. But you could say that of any expression of gender. So what I just it's odd to me that they focus on trans people because any time if I say I'm male, I am reinforcing a gender binary. Yeah. You know, if if and most of the people who are making this claim are probably identifying uh, well, maybe not most, but a, a lot. Maybe some are, are non-binary, but some are identifying as male or female, and they're reinforcing the gender binary. And so, uh, yeah, any expression of gender, I guess, is going to, including trans or cis, is going to reinforce the gender binary. Mm-hmm. But the the deeper thing is that actually acknowledging and, and, and granting rights to and validating the experience of trans people, I, for me, actually undermines uh, the gender binary because it shows how there if there can be movement between two static categories then it then it makes those categories porous and, and less rigid and I, for me that's a step in the direction of of deconstructing the yeah. the gender binary and and more importantly most importantly is that if you want to create a genderless society you don't get there by pretending the gender doesn't exist just going okay as as of today we're not going to talk about it we're not going to acknowledge gender yeah and that means we can't acknowledge the experience of trans people and i analogize it i've actually made the argument the other way when i was talking about um uh these anti-identity politics uh class reductionist types Mm -hmm. and and black lives matter 
I, I mean it the other way in the argument the other way but if if you want to create a a a raceless society a society where there is no racism we don't get there by uh pretending everybody is colorblind right yeah. you, we're not going to overcome racism until we until people can acknowledge racism that's the step we're at and mm-hmm. you know you have these people like uh, uh, Adolf Reed and, and and other people who are who make the argument well any acknowledgement of race is racist and if you you know if we focus on race it's divisive and the way to move forward is just to focus on on class it's the same kind of argument and it's being made in 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 leftist circles both on the issue of race and on this issue of, of trans experience trans people and um, it's the same argument structurally. Like we we want a genderless society, or we want a we want a, a, a you know a race a raceless society, and therefore we're going to just not talk about race or not acknowledge the experience of uh, people whose gender doesn't conform to you know who's who's different. And yeah, we're not we're not, we're not going to get to a feminist society by by erasing trans people. That's just so obvious. Yeah. glaringly obvious yeah. and that's why i think um you know i put in the article i said i just i don't buy i i, I the people making these arguments are not stupid I, I don't buy that that's really it's so convoluted and it's so ass backwards i don't buy that that's really the the, the issue for them and i don't buy that that's that this argument that king's north was making about oh it's it's he's concerned about transhumanism and cell phones mm-hmm. i i don't think that's what's going on yeah. I I think on s- some level, um, you know, human beings have an instinctual reaction to anything that doesn't fit into our categories. And these categories are are psychological and they're socially constructed and they can be changed. And but initially, a lot of people have a, a, a visceral reaction to to hearing about talking about it, certainly encountering trans people. You got to get over it. That's just it. You got to get over it. But some people don't. Rather than trying to get over it, they they create all these arguments to try to reinforce these mental categories. That's what I what I think is really going on. And then we come back to the you know the argument about what's natural. And they say, well, this is what's natural. These two, I have in my head two boxes, male and female, and I don't want to move them because it would shake up my whole mental world. And that's natural. You know, I use mm-hmm. it's a way to moralizing what's actually just a social construction. And um, anyway, so, yeah, th- that's what I think is really going on is some kind of like a deep unconscious, maybe semi-conscious um, revulsion that people have. And I'm sorry, but they got to fucking get over it uh, because <laughs> these are human <laughs> beings. And if you actually knew <laughs> talk to people who are trans if you got to know people who are trans if you were friends with people who are trans this was this is a non-issue i yeah. i can testify to that as from personal experience you know this is a non-issue when these people become real people for you yeah it's it's really that simple and that's what kind of where i concluded the article was um you know when you lose sight of the actual humanity of another person and they become an idea for you um mm-hmm. then you're you're taking a step down the road to fascism 